Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, um, it's my pleasure to be here on the platform, the Intentional Preventing Platform. So part of this conference, uh, I was here last year by the grace of God, and I'm back here, you know, this year again. It's my pleasure to be with you this awesome evening Sunday. Uh, for those of us who are Christians, I was church today. Hope we had a great time. And for those of us who belong to uh, different faiths, how has it been? Um, I'm going to be spending some time with us this evening discussing the subject matter of is your home safe? Uh, it is important, it's a, it's a very important question for us to ask, really. Uh, is your home really safe? And I wish I can just ask you guys, is your home safe? I know some people, uh, the response that people are going to give is that my home is safe. And, um, but where the problem may be is when we ask, how are you sure your home is safe? Because it's not enough for you to say your home is safe. You must be able to tell us in tangible terms how you believe your home is safe. Uh, that is a major issue. So if I'm going to ask you, if you're watching, I want to ask you, if you say your home is safe, the question I want to ask you is, how are are you sure your home is safe? Are you sure your home is safe? What are the criteria that you judge with to say your home is safe? What are the things you have put in place to say that your home is safe? Um, because anybody can make any claim. A man can wake up to say, I'm a woman. So what do we do? Uh, a woman can wake up and say, I'm a man. What do we do? A Yoruba man can wake up and say, I'm an Igbo man. What do we do? If claims are anything to go by, anybody can make any claim. You wake up tomorrow and say, I have 50 million. What do we do? So it's not enough for you to say your home is safe. It's important that we, we lay a foundation. So for every claim you make, for every claim you make, there must be evidence. Claim must be followed by evidence. Are we together? It is claim plus evidence that is called facts. When you make a claim that does not have evidence, it is called wishful talk. But for every claim you make, you must back up your claim with evidence. That is when the claim becomes a fact. And your fact must therefore be, be developed so that your fact becomes your opinion, your opinion. That is what is your judgment because your judgment is your opinion of a matter. What is my opinion? My opinion is judgment, my judgment of the matter. So let me quickly say again, the question is, is my home safe? Is my home safe? And I'm saying that if we ask everybody watching right now, you are going to say, my home is safe. But I said, well, the problem is, when we begin to ask you, how are you sure your home is safe? What is the criteria? What is the permutation? How did you arrive at that decision that your home is safe? And I'm saying that for every claim we make, whether it's that my home is safe, my children are safe, Everything is okay by me. For every claim we made, we must, as a matter of necessity, back up our claim with evidence. It is the combination of claim and evidence that leads to fact. It is fact that leads to opinion. So letting up from letting up from there, it, before you can say your home is safe as a claim, what evidence do you have? What system have you put in place in your home to ensure that your children are safe? What, what, what structure have you put in place? What exactly have you done to be able to say in categorical terms that my home is safe? Those are the questions I want us to, those are the things I want us to quickly look at. 
before you can say your home is saved, you must have in place a system that protects your children. And please don't let me clearly define a system. It is a combination of connected actions, connected actions with targeted towards ensuring that your children are safe. A combination of targeted actions documented which outcome is to ensure that your children are safe. That is a system. So a system has three components for your home. Three components. Component number one is what are your goals or set of goals for the protection of your children, for the safety of your children? What are your goals? What is your goal? Goal here addresses your expectation, your clearly defined expectation when it comes to the protection of your children. Goals or set of goals. That's one component of system. System will also address who is responsible for what? Who is responsible for what? In your home, when we talk about safety of children, who is responsible for what? What is your spouse responsible for? What are your siblings? See, they are giving you responsible for. What are your children responsible for? All of this must be clearly stated when it comes to the subject matter of the subject matter of a system. Then, the third thing about a system is that once there is goal and set of goals, and once there is um, a responsibility share, then balance will be introduced, which means balance is a result, not an act. The act is first goals or set of goals for the protection of your children. Two is who is responsible for what? Once we create the goals and set of goals and we create who is responsible for what, the next thing that will happen is that balance will be created. So you cannot stand right on that triangle until you have introduced goals and set of goals. In this goals and set of goals, we have assigned responsibility to everyone within the family. Thereafter, we achieve balance. So if your balance does not have at its foundation goals and set of goals, and who is responsible for what, what happens is that that balance is not a balance. So a system speaks to coordinated actions by different individuals who are stakeholders in the life of the child to work towards an outcome which ensures the safety of the child. So this system must be codified into a policy. What is a policy? A policy is a statement of will. It's a statement of commitment. It removes a matter from the realm of conjectures, from the realm of wishful thinking, and brings it to the realm of implementation. A policy is an implementation tool. It's a tool that tells us, now that we have dealt with the subject matter of a system, we must proceed to have a policy. So this is the question I'll ask you. In your home, what is the policy? Is there in place a system? by which children are protected. In your home, is there a policy which is a follow-up to the system? Those are fundamental issues. So until you have in place a system, until you have in place a, a policy, you may not be too serious about securing a friendly and protective environment for your children. And please allow us to know the word friendly. You know, because children don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So speak about friendly. For you to protect children, 
for your home to be friendly, to be protective, children must first feel like friends. They must feel your warmth. They must feel your warmth. They must feel that you are warm towards them. They must see you as a friend, as a friendly authority. They must see you as someone they can confide in, somebody they can talk to. You know, because Josh McDowell says, rules without relationship will lead to nothing but rebellion. So it is important that in securing a friendly and friendly environment for our children, we create a system, we codify the system into a policy, then we enjoy a cordial relationship with our children. This relationship is not compromisable. Our children cannot be coming to our room and they have to do the sign of the cross before they can come in. Our children cannot call us and before they talk to us, they are fidgety, they are, they are fidgety, they are, they, are, they, are, they are afraid, they don't know what the next thing is going to be. We must choose as parents to be friendly. And that's why I will say to you quickly that the word parent is an acronym. The word P stands for pay attention. How much attention are you paying to your children? In paying attention, you're not going to pay attention by shouting. You're not going to pay attention by, by, by hitting children. You're not going to pay attention by denying them of food. You're going to pay attention by putting in place system that ensure that, that, that your children are safe. So, so you need to pay attention. So the challenges that young people are going through, you need to pay attention. Number two, you need to act together in unity. Yourself and your spouse have to come together if you are a married woman or a married man. And if you are a single parent, it is important also to understand that you need to be in unity with your value system so that you can raise your children. The word as arrow means you must be ready to be real, ready to be real, ready to be real. You must be ready to be real with these children. Be ready to be real in discussing your struggles. You know, many people are not able to discuss sexuality education with their children because they themselves were sexually molested and they never found help. Since they never found help, they are not able to talk to their children because talking to their children about the sexuality of their children reminds them of their pain. And they don't want to go through that pain. You must be ready to be real. If you are not real, you cannot help children to be safe. If you are not real, you are still going to go and keep your child with a neighbor who you know you cannot vouch for. If you are not real, you are going to allow people in your home who you know they don't have the best interests of your children at heart, just because they are family members, you are going to keep them there because you are not being real, recognizing that your first responsibility is to your children, not to extended family members. And if you accommodate a family member into your home, and you are not sure of who the family member is, and you, are, and you suspect that the family member can, 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 can mess up your child, it is your responsibility to be real to the point of discussing that with your spouse so that this kind of member, family, extended family member can be removed from your home. You need to be real. You must be ready to be real. There's nothing you want to do with children if you are not real. You have to be real about the state of affairs. You have to be real about their safety. You have to be real about the issues that are out there. So these children are going through a lot. What it means to protect children or to keep our home safe when we were being raised is completely different now. When we're being raised to keep our home safe, our mother can go and hide the VHS player. Our mother can take away the, 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 the VHS. But today, the, everything our children want to watch, everything I want to destroy them is in their hand. Is in their phone. It's just a button away. And that is so pathetic. So everything is not button away. The media has been over-democratized. Everybody is now a publisher. Once you have a phone and you have data, everybody is a publisher. The distraction that our children are going through is so enormous, is so much, that we need to empathize with them. We need to work with them. We need to provide a... We need to secure a friendly and protective environment for these precious children. The word E means engage. You must engage children. You must engage children. You must engage children. We must engage children. We must ask them questions. What are the issues you are dealing with? What is going on in your school? We must engage children. If they are going to be safe in our home, if they are going to be safe, 
they must be able to engage us and we must be able to engage them until you engage your child you may not know whether the child is safe or not and i'll tell you a pathetic story an 11 year old boy was registered in a boarding school and so he did one time three months he came back home and told the parents he didn't want to go back to the boarding school the parents insisted he had to go back because they made payment for a whole session so the boy had to go back so the boy was driven to the boarding school outside lagos when they got there when they got to the gate and the mother was driving him in he told the mother something he said mommy i don't want you to drop me but if you drop me in this school today be rest assured that you will not see me again and the mother became so a, a bit started because the mother became worried and the mother called the father and the father said bring him back to lagos when this boy got back to lagos the person was also going to talk to the parents and somebody suggested that the boy should be brought to me i want to put the boy to me you see when they bring young people to me i don't address the issue why they bring them i address the issue behind why they brought them so the, my first question to this young boy is not, why don't you want to go back to boarding school? That is a wrong question. My question to him was, how, what is your experience in boarding school? You know, you can talk to me, I, I encourage him. And he told me, sir, my experience in boarding school is unpleasant. Uh, many seniors, and even some juniors, were trying to sodomize me. And I knew that this is contrary to what my parents have taught me. And so, I decided that I would just manage myself and once we are on holidays, I'm not going to go back. Then I called the parents and informed the parents the story of the boy. And that was when they calmed down. If they have found a way to engage their boy, they would have known what the boy was going through and they would have been able to nip it in the boy. They were not engaging the boy. And because they did not engage the boy, the boy was going to run into trouble Though he had decided I wasn't going to die in silence. And uh, the word E means engage, parents. The word N means never say never. You know, I was having a conversation with Ms. Wendy Ologe before this, this show started. We're saying never say never. Don't say it can't happen to my child. Every language is the caution. Caution is the language of safety. Don't say it can't happen to me. We are fortified. Can you say it can't happen to you when you are going to bed in the night to open your door? You open it and you say, it cannot happen to me, I cannot be robbed. Can you say when you are going out, you refuse to wear any clothes? You just go out naked. And when they say, why? And you say, nobody will see me. It can't happen to me that somebody will tell me that I'm naked. Lie, lie, it can't happen to me. I will just be going. I will just be going. Can you say it's not going to happen to me? You drive your car. To a shopping mall or to church, you refuse to, you, you fail to lock the door. Somebody calls your attention, you say, Madam, you have not locked the door of your car. He said, No, it can't happen to me. They can't my car. Do you say that? In your business, a customer calls you to say, ah, Please come and supply this product. Do you, do you say you won't supply the product and will go bankrupt because it cannot happen to me? Nobody and my business will never go down. I am not doing anything about it. So please, I don't want us to be hypocritical. To think something cannot happen to us. Let me tell you something. Anything can happen to you except you take caution. Except you take caution. Except you develop a system. The system is codified into a policy. Your home and your children, they understand the rules and regulations. Some families have family codes. If somebody comes to the child and says, Mommy, ask, you, ask me to bring you. Is going to ask, sorry, what's the call? Once the person is not able to tell the child the call, what happens is that the child begins to run and begins to raise an alarm. And don't, that's how this thing works. So the question is, what policy do you have in your home? The question is, what system do you have in your home? The question is, have you trained your children? Have you educated them on this policy? Now, let me go into specifics. I want to go into specifics. The number one thing you need to understand is that in the home, 
your children are exposed to four kinds of dangers. Four kinds of danger your children are exposed to. They're exposed to domestic accident in the world. They're exposed to um, being kidnapped. Somebody can come in and lure them and get them out of the home. They are, they are, so that's number two. Number three, your number three danger is that your children are exposed to the danger of those who are close to you, who come close, nannies, cousins, brothers, and all of those people. Your children are exposed to those people. So I talk about four areas. Domestic accident. I talk about people that are close to you, living with you. I talk about kidnapping. It happens in the home front. So this is the point. And the fourth one, which you need to pay attention to, which is the most critical, it is now that spouses, fathers, are abusing their daughters, mothers, are abusing their sons, things are now happening in the home. So before you can say your home is safe, what system have you put in place to prevent your child from domestic accident? Remember the story of Stella Monye, whose, whose son was playing in the house, and the son penis and scrotum entered into a broken uh, side table, a, a glass side table, and she was running around, you know, many years ago, trying to raise funds for reconstruction, for, for reconstructive uh, 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 operation, surgery for this boy. You remember that? Domestic accident. Children cannot play outdoor play indoors. Outdoors is outdoor. They can't be running around. They run into glasses. They run into a mirror. They run into you run into a sharp object. They they, they hit their head on the ground. So the, the so what system are people in place to prevent that? Do you what do you now? There's a principle. Whatever you don't want children to touch, don't put it where they can touch it. How does that work in your home? Do you litter things around? that they have written on it, keep out of the reach of children. But you keep it around, you keep your drug around, you forget that your children can swallow everything in one day, in one second. You keep your perfume around, you forget that your children can drink it, you keep your insecticide around, you forget that your children can spray it to their mouth, you keep your bleach around, you forget that your children can drink it, you keep your blade around, you forget that your children can cut themselves with it, you put your needles around. You forget your children can arm themselves with it. You put your knives around. You forget your children can arm themselves with knives. You put your TV, when the hand of the children can reach it, you come back, you are complaining that the TV has been damaged. So we need to focus, what have we put in place? The other day, a woman was watching TV. And she was watching TV, busy watching TV, when she stepped out to go and drink water, she found his three-year, a three-year-old son suffocating under the nylon that under the under the nylon that the that the dry cleaner brought under which they wrapped their clothes. Brought and the child was already suffocating under that nylon. The child was going to die if not that the woman saw it on time. So what was the woman doing? That the child that the child you know found herself under that nylon, and she was going to suffocate. In Antony village, Lagos, Lagos state, and a, a group of people were living in a compound. There's a man in that compound who fries, who fries fish and, and, and hawks the fish. And this man, it is his custom. When he finishes frying fish, he pulls the, 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 the tray, he pulls the, the fry pan, the beef fry pan on the ground so that, so that the, the oil will cool down before he will pour it in a gallon. Then a woman was going out in that compound, left a two-year-old child in the care of nobody. It happened in Lagos, I'm telling you. And this child crawled into that hot oil that had just been used to fry fish that was being put down to a pool. Of course, the child fried. 
Of course, the child was rushed to the hospital, only for the child to die in the hospital like two days or so. What system have you put in place to protect your children from domestic accidents? What system do you have in your home? What are the kind of play your children can play in the house? Indoors game are meant for indoors play. Scrabble, Monopoly, chess. Those are the things children should be doing inside. It's not that they'll be running around where there's a mirror, there's a glass, there's everything, and you can't contain them. It is a meeting. You should have had your children from the beginning to say, excuse me, young people, there are things we don't do indoors. There are things that are indoors game. There are things that are outdoor game. The children must understand that clearly. They must understand it clearly. Children should not be running around in the house. Then your children have the right to play. They don't have the right for, they don't have the right to unsupervised play. That's what happened to me when I was growing up. I was playing with, it was during break. I went to a South Indian primary school, I do equity. Then on those days, now equity is safe. I was playing with my friend, that as we were playing, as we were playing, not playing, 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 we were playing. As we were playing, we, somebody had come to renovate the school, a carpenter. The carpenter has left this long, long, long table that carpenter normally uses as some plants. So what did we do as children? We began to put that plant across the table and began to climb on it. I climbed on it a couple of times. I climbed, climbed on it a couple of times. Then it was my friend's turn to climb on it, Dada. And when Dada climbed on it, what happened? The, the middle of that plant broke and went straight into Dada's stomach. I raised an alarm and everybody came and Dada was rushed to the hospital. And three days, two or three days after, news came to school that Dada had died. As children, we had the right to play, but we did not have the right to unsupervised play. Who is a child? A child is anybody below 18 years old. Your children have the right to play, but they do not have the right to unsupervised play. Have a right to unsupervised play. Unsupervised play is dangerous. Unsupervised play, they don't know the boundaries. They don't know what to stop. And you must remove from your home things that can encourage unsupervised play. The, play, the place to play football is not on the marble. The, it's, not on, it's, not, it's, it's not on the concrete. That's why, why you play football. The place to run around, to run around, to blind and seek, is not on marble. It's not on concrete floors. That's why we need to agitate in this country for recreation centers built by government. There are many so, so many private owned recreation centers today. But you see, if we are going to solve a problem, we must look at the solution. So if our children must not play inside, you they must always be engaged in, 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 in what we call indoor, 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 indoor play, which is games. Then where do they play? They, we must find time to take them to recreation centers. It must be in our system. It must be in our policy. Once a month, the family will visit a recreation center. In the community where we live, we must demand for the for the plan, for the for the plan, for the community plan. Where is a recreation center supposed to be? Every community is supposed to have a recreation center where children can come and play. But those, those recreation centers today have been sold. They have been sold. The houses have been built on them. And we as parents, we are not agitated. We are not asking questions. Where do children play? The indoor play. Is not children cannot be played inside. Inside will lead to crisis. Those recreation centers need to be built. Need to be built. We need to decide what recreation center we are going to take our children to. Not only to play computer games, not only to go and play where they can
was your children to pray. The kind of abuse today does not give room for children to pray. Children can come inside. Safety means that they cannot they cannot sweat inside. They cannot run around inside. But when you say they cannot play inside, the question is where are they going to play? That's one thing. Our policy must come that. Number two, our policy must cover kidnapping. People are children at home alone. Man, 
who was the, who was the first um, 